presenting the news to millions throughout the pandemic to hosting her own BAFTA award-winning programme. Journalist Victoria Derbyshire is a tour de force on our screens. Last year, she bravely reflected on her breast cancer diagnosis on I'm a Celebrity with her campmate, Jessica Plummer. And seeing the public's reaction has made her even more determined to open up the conversation around cancer. We're going to talk to Victoria in just a moment. But first, here's a clip of that powerful moment. I just looked in the mirror and my right breast was about two inches lower than my left. Oh, I have a boob lower than my other boob. Do not worry. Okay. Has it always been like that? Pretty much. It's been like it for a long time. Yeah. So that's your normal. OK. I knew that wasn't how I normally looked. Right. Not only that, the nipple had become inverted. So it was oh. as though someone was pulling it backwards. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, I thought, oh, that looks weird. Oh, I'll just sort that tomorrow. I did not think anything. Oh, I didn't. Victoria. Oh, no. And five days later, it was confirmed that it was breast cancer. Right. So you went home, told Mark what the doctor said. Yeah. And... Uh, what did he say? Well, we could barely speak, you know. We could barely speak to each other. Um, we just, you know, we are we are talkers. We are open. We are, you know, and we just we just had no words because all honestly, all I was thinking was, I'm going to die. Oh my goodness, it's quite a thing even to watch it back. Actually, I know. I do. I actually feel quite emotional. I know. Well, but... it's interesting because even as you're saying it there. I think sometimes it's a story that you tell mm. and then it's almost like you catch yourself halfway through yeah. and remember. I mean, it was five years... It happened to you and how yeah, dreadful it was. absolutely. It was five years ago and so sometimes I think, oh, that's a lifetime ago, but I can remember everything absolutely vividly. Mm. Um, and fair play to ITV for putting that out on I'm a Celeb because it's not exactly a laugh a minute, but 11 million people saw that and I had so many messages when I came out of the castle from women of all ages saying, oh, I, I always thought breast cancer was a lump. You know, I didn't know that you could have an inverted nipple and that might be a sign. And so, so many women went to check and for many of them, there was no problem. And for some, they were actually diagnosed with breast cancer and they wouldn't have gone had it not been for that conversation. For such a, a, a well-known illness, there's still a huge amount of ignorance, isn't it? I remember uh, meeting you, uh, we lost a friend, Rosie Schwaker, and we, we met, there was a charity set up in the name and we were, we were chatting at the launch of that charity. And that was about secondary breast cancer, mm. which I think is a term that's, that's bandied about a lot, but not many people actually know what it is, do yeah. they? I mean, that... There is a terminology within cancer which is, uh, excludes people. I mean, secondary breast cancer means advanced breast cancer. It means it's not curable, but it is treatable. Um, and, and on this podcast, which we've launched, we try to use plain English. We explain what all the terms are because we don't want to exclude people. We want people to know what to look for, what things mean, because obviously the earlier you catch it, the greater your chances of survival. Mm. And that must have been such a hard conversation to have when you came back from the doctors and, mm. and you knew what had happened. How did that impact the family and how, what changed as, as a result? Um, gosh, what changed? Um, well, we was, when you, I was told, it is malignant. I'm really sorry, it is malignant. Um, and at that point, I was with my now husband, Mark, and we were, I was calm. Um, but I felt like this kind of fist had just crushed me. Mm. But we were just asking questions. We're journalists, we just asked lo for loads of information. When we got outside the surgery, then I just cried and I yeah. was cross and I swore and I said, this is a joke. I haven't got time for breast cancer. What the hell, you know? And then you, we got into practical mode. You've got to ring people. You've got to let your bosses know. You've got to work out when and how are you going to tell your children? I mean, our boys were 8 and 11 at the time. Mm. Um, we didn't tell them then because we didn't know if I was going to die or not. You know, we didn't know if it was treatable. And how much support is there for... Obviously, there's you suffering mm. physically and mentally. But how much support is there for the family and advice for how you deal with that conversation? That is a really good question. I, I mean, children. Yeah, I mean, there are there are loads of brilliant charities. Future Dreams. I've been working with this Macmillan, as you know, Cancer Research UK, the charity you mentioned, Martin. Um, 
but you don't necessarily go looking for it as a yeah. family because your whole focus is on the person who's been diagnosed. Mm. So you're, you're, you know, Mark was trying to keep it together for the kids. He was taking them to school. He was doing the cooking, the shopping, the running them to football, cricket, etc., etc. There almost isn't time to get support for yourself. So hard. And and currently, because of the lockdown. People are going too late, aren't yes. they? To, I mean, to get checked. Partly because they feel like they were given the message, don't bother the health service unless it's yeah. COVID. But presumably partly because those services haven't been there. Yeah. I mean, screening was delayed because when the COVID when COVID started, it was all hands on deck in the NHS, which we totally get. But it means that thousands of people did not go for their routine mammograms mm. or if they discovered an issue or a problem, they didn't want to burden their local hospital, which I totally get. And also, they didn't want to catch COVID. Well, you know, if you remember, we were told to stay at home. Mm. So nobody wanted to go to the hospital, um, which means some people have had a later diagnosis, which, you know, means potentially their chances of survival are reduced. And that is a shocker. So the most important thing we need to do is get the message out there to get checked. And if you get it treated early enough, well, your living testament, the fact you're still here doing your job, talking about it, is, is an inspiration to many. And also just a warning for people. If you're worried, speak to your doctor. 100%. Just if there's anything that looks slightly unusual about your breast, just think, OK, that looks a bit different. I'm going to get it checked out. The GPs are there for you. Yeah. The podcast is And Then Came Breast Cancer. Yes. Um, available now. And if you or someone you know has been affected, uh, then there are details of organisations which offer advice and support at itv.com forward slash helplines. Very good to see you. And you. You look phenomenal. Thank you. So do you. <laughs> <laughs>